Operation Magic Carpet, one of the largest and least known operations of World War II, aimed to bring American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines back home. Over 400 ships, including aircraft carriers and battleships, were involved in this joyful military exercise that reunited loved ones and transported wounded soldiers to hospitals. In 1943, plans were set in motion for the repatriation of American troops after the war. The War Shipping Administration was tasked with overseeing the operation and the establishment of a prioritization system called the Advanced Service Rating Score, ASRS, was crucial. However, the initial ASRS would have resulted in the quick removal of experienced officers and non-commissioned officers, leading to concerns about efficiency and discipline. Changes were eventually made in response to the troops' dissatisfaction and the need for troops in Europe and the impending invasion of Japan. As Operation Magic Carpet commenced, the Army and Army Air Forces were the first to be affected. Despite the ongoing war in the Pacific, efforts were made to bring back a significant number of troops from Europe, with over three million service personnel awaiting their return. Ships were quickly converted to transport troops, including iconic vessels like the British Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth, while replacement troops and repatriating German prisoners of war were sent to Europe. By the end of June, American troops eligible for discharge were already on their way home. Operation War Brides, a part of Operation Magic Carpet, was initiated in 1946 to bring the wives and children of American servicemen stationed overseas to the United States. However, Upon arrival, these women were often faced with the reality of a husband who appeared unfamiliar, no longer in military attire but rather in civilian clothing and occupation. Many husbands were struggling with unemployment, relying on the separation allowance of $20 per week, while also dealing with the taboo subject of combat fatigue, known today as PTSD. Following Japan's surrender, Operation Magic Carpet Planning became obsolete. The U.S. Navy, no longer needed for the occupation of Japan and the Philippines, released ships for use in the operation. The recently commissioned USS Lake Champlain, along with the battleship Washington and other ships, were sent to the Atlantic, with Lake Champlain transformed to accommodate over 3,000 men in one voyage. After establishing footholds in France, the American Army created camps named after popular cigarette brands like Old Gold and Lucky Strike. These camps served as temporary stations for reinforcements and were later equipped with more permanent structures as Germany's collapse became imminent. As the Army began reducing its ranks, the camps took on a new purpose of forming new military units and retraining existing ones for deployment to the Pacific. In order to determine which soldiers were eligible to go home and be discharged, the U.S. Army implemented a point system. Soldiers earned points based on factors such as months served, time spent overseas, battle stars earned, and awards received. Those with 85 points were sent to camps for preparation to return home, while those with lower scores were either reassigned within Europe or sent to the United States for retraining. Once the American veterans reached the cigarette camps, their days were filled with daily formations and various chores to keep them occupied. They were issued new uniforms, had their souvenirs examined, and were warned about the strict rules regarding firearms. Despite the prohibition on gambling, the troops found ways to entertain themselves with card games and dice. They were even granted passes to explore nearby towns and indulge in French wine, brandy, and the company of French women while eagerly awaiting their ship back to the United States. 
Changes were made to the point system, allowing for faster demobilization of troops after Japan's surrender. British troops were also repatriated, with Royal Navy ships collecting them from the China-Burma-India theater and war bride trains transporting them to ports for their journey home. Ships were sent across the Pacific and through the Panama Canal to gather scattered units and bring them back to England and North America. During Operation Magic Carpet, the U.S. Navy encountered unique challenges. With over 3 million personnel and a vast fleet of ships, the Navy had to reduce manpower while maintaining essential construction and crewing ships with inexperienced sailors due to public pressure to discharge veterans. Every U.S. naval vessel that returned to the United States carried veterans of the war, except for submarines. Some ships even picked up additional passengers along the way, transporting them to Midway Atoll and Pearl Harbor. The Navy converted 57 aircraft carriers into repatriation ships, stripping them of combat equipment and installing rows of bunks to accommodate the servicemen. The pace of Operation Magic Carpet left the American public dissatisfied as they wanted their loved ones home quickly after the end of combat. Congress faced demands for immediate demobilization but the Navy encountered logistical and manpower problems that slowed the process. Nonetheless, 700,000 Americans were brought home from the Pacific Theater in December 1945, with hopes of being reunited with their families for Christmas. The American transportation system was overwhelmed as troops returned home, requiring them to go through military processing before being discharged. This processing took place in former training camps and included various procedures such as medical exams and training on their rights under the GI Bill. Once discharged, the servicemen faced challenges getting home due to limited train availability and traffic jams, resulting in delays of up to 12 hours. As a result, many found themselves spending Christmas in unfamiliar processing camps instead of with their loved ones. During Christmas of 1945, the troops returning to the United States had to spend the holiday near processing centers as they couldn't secure a train ride home. Some lucky ones, especially those from the Air Forces, managed to hitch a ride on aircraft destined for scrapping, braving the cold holds of planes that had once dropped bombs in Germany and the Pacific. Those who couldn't leave the centers were warmly welcomed by nearby civilians, who invited them into their homes for festive meals and celebrations. The generosity shown towards the returning troops was truly overwhelming, with long-haul truckers offering rides and even a Los Angeles cab driver driving six veterans all the way to Chicago for just the cost of gasoline. Even troops still on ships in American anchorages were treated to Christmas dinner and entertainment courtesy of local groups' donations. By February 1946, the European phase of Operation Magic Carpet had been successfully completed, with American harbors on the East Coast filled with ships from the operation. These ships were being prepared for storage as reusable equipment was dismantled and transported by trucks and railroad cars. Meanwhile, the Pacific Magic Carpet faced additional challenges as veterans were scattered across various islands and bases. The Navy's destroyers played a crucial role in collecting and delivering these isolated units to assembly points for their journey home. Soldiers transported on U.S. Navy destroyers during Operation Magic Carpet faced a journey unlike anything they had ever experienced. The small crews and limited amenities on the destroyers were strained by the large number of additional men on board, leaving little in the way of comfort. Soldiers received a letter from the ship's captain outlining expectations, care provisions, and the daily schedule known as the plan of the day. This schedule informed them of meal times, movie showings, water usage regulations, 
assembly points during ship operations, designated smoking areas and restricted areas. However, the rough seas often caused seasickness among soldiers and even the Navy crews, leading to inter-service rivalries and occasional conflicts. The soldiers returning from Japan were processed in centers established in Japan and the Philippines, while the Navy processed its personnel from Pearl Harbor. They were assigned a priority number and boarded ships based on availability, with aircraft carriers having the most space. The ships encountered stormy weather during the long voyage, and while gambling and alcohol were prohibited, some soldiers managed to smuggle alcohol on board. Many army officers feigned ignorance of this practice among their men. The USS Saratoga, a distinguished aircraft carrier, played a crucial role in the Pacific during World War II. After surviving torpedo hits and kamikaze attacks, the ship was converted into a training carrier and became the first to transport troops home from the Pacific in Operation Magic Carpet. By July 1945, it had brought 29th 104 veterans back to the United States, the most of any ship involved. Sadly, after its final magic carpet voyage, the Saratoga sank in Bikini Atoll due to the explosions of two atomic bombs. During Operation Magic Carpet, both the U.S. Army Air Force's Air Transport Command, ATC, and the U.S. Navy's Naval Air Transport Service, NATS, played a limited role in transporting servicemen back to the United States. The ATC shuttled returning servicemen on space-available flights, while NATS moved officers and non-commissioned officers to assembly areas for embarkation. However, the majority of servicemen returned on ships and trains rather than aircraft. With the arrival of a convoy of 29 American troop ships in April 1946, Operation Magic Carpet officially came to an end, having successfully repatriated troops from the China-Burma-India theater. Although troops continued to trickle back from the Pacific over the next five months, it wasn't until September 1946 that the last 100 veterans of the war against Japan returned bringing the total number of American men and women brought back home to over 8 million in just 18 months. Operation Magic Carpet marked the beginning of American demobilization, leading to a shift in the economy from war to commercial production. The United States military drastically reduced its active duty personnel, scrapped battleships, and suspended the draft although it was later reinstated due to inadequate enlistments. Despite the operation's impact on abandoned facilities and taxpayer costs, its primary objective was to bring servicemen and women home swiftly.